Hey guys, this is Mrs. Pearson here, and we are going to be starting a new unit all about art history. So this is sort of the story of art curated, of course, and um, very much condensed from the very beginning of art making that we know of to present day. And so we're going to start all the way back at the beginning with Paleolithic art, but real quick first. I want to just share something about art history. So art history is something that I am super passionate about. Now, when I was in school, I wasn't always really into like history class. And the reason is I didn't love trying to remember people's names. I didn't love trying to remember like the names of places. I didn't love trying to remember dates and things like that. I wasn't super into um, just like watching the war and all this kind of stuff. And it always felt a little bit like it was somebody else telling the story, okay? And that somebody else has often been in history, an old white dude who won the war telling the story. But the awesome thing about art history is that as we study art history, we're actually looking at the people of the time telling their own story. And the art is actually able to give us an opportunity to see it almost in a first person point of view um, from the person who actually lived it and was there and made the art. Obviously, there's a lot of room for interpretation and what art survived, um, what lens are we looking at the art through as our own, you know, modern mind. But it really is a chance to sort of go back in time, almost time travel. So I want you to think about that as we travel to Paleolithic art and almost picture yourself taking a trip back in time and try to picture what it was like back then, okay? So before we jump into the two works of art that we're gonna be looking at, now there's countless works of art that we could look at, but for the sake of brevity, we're gonna focus on two specific works of art that are super famous and super cool, I think. Obviously, I think of that. So Paleolithic art. Paleo means super old. And lithic means stone-like. So Paleolithic art is like super old stone art. So think of the stone ages. That is where we're traveling back. And um, now these dates are kind of rough, obviously. So we're going back to about 40,000 BCE to 10,000 BCE. And um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a better um, idea of the actual scale of how far back that was in just a minute. So right now, I just want you to think about this is a super, super long time ago, like as long ago as there were humans and they were making art. So let's check it out. Come on. Come on. Okay. Venus of Willendorf. So this is the first piece that we are going to look at. Venus of Willendorf. Okay. Now, first of all, let's just think about the name real quick. The person who made this 25,000 BCE years ago um, probably didn't name it Venus of Willendorf. We don't know what they named it because the key here is prehistoric art is art written or art made before there were written records, okay? So art made before written records. So did the artist sit down and write a little artist statement and a little title and make a little plaque and stick it on the wall? No, okay? No. So this name was given by the people that found it. So Venus is just a really famous goddess, Greek goddess, that a lot of art has been named after. So we're just kind of calling it the goddess. And Willendorf is where it was found. So like the goddess of Willendorf, woman of Willendorf, just some woman that we do not know who she is. Now, this was made about, again, this is kind of a guesstimate here, about 25,000 BCE. So let's just think about that, okay? We're in year 2021 right now, 2021, 2000, not 2000, 21, 2021. So we're going to go back. So here we are right here in 2021. We're going to go about 2021 years ago to here, to year zero. Then from year zero, we have to go back 25,000 more years to get to when this was made. Okay. Hopefully that blew your mind because when I first learned about this, it, the, 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 the gravity of just how long ago didn't hit me right at first. So I want you to think about this one more time, okay? 25,000 BC. So we're in 2021, not 20,021 right now. We're in year 
2021. So we're gonna go back 2021 years to get to year zero. Then from year zero, we gotta go back 25,000 more years to get to the people that made this. Now, you see three little figurines here. It's really only one figurine, but this has been photographed from three angles. So you can see the front and you can see the sides. And she is four and a half inches tall, about four and a half inches tall. So I got my ruler, my little hand. I have a little hand, okay? And she comes up to here. She's not even my whole hand. So she's about this big. So she could be carried around. And that was important because the Paleolithic people lived a nomadic lifestyle. Nomadic means moving around, okay? So they were following the animals that they were hunting and the um, edible um, food that would, you know, vegetation that they could eat that was available. So they were just kind of moving around, guys. They didn't have like these big stone structures built that they were like camping out in. They were camping out in caves. They were camping out under trees, wherever, in meadows. Okay, um, so they had to be able to carry stuff around if they wanted it. So this would, you know, be small enough to just hold or fit in some kind of a, I don't know if they had satchels or not. Um, and it was probably carved out of a little stone, a little piece of stone. Now, what you'll see when you look at her is that the things that are exaggerated on her are related to female fertility. So we see very big breasts. We see very curvy hips. Um, we see her genitals, okay? And all of these things are related to fertility, making a baby, making the species live on, okay? But one of the key things of any animal is to survive to reproduce because if the little group of people, little paleolithic people didn't survive to reproduce, then they gone, okay? So she's very curvilicious. So we can only guess that this is to um, imply that she was some kind of a token of fertility. Now, another thing, do you think that Paleolithic people really were able to get like this curvilicious? We think about this, like they're like running around hunting, gathering. Um, they don't got Netflix to sit and watch on their couch and chill. Like they're, they're having like gather their food, travel, walk really long distances, you know, really like work out. Um, they probably none of them ever got this chunk delicious. So this would indicate a level of um, food availability that would have been like mind blowing to them. Okay, like they couldn't just go up to Walmart and like grab some Cheetos. They had to go hunt an antelope, you know, with some kind of like really primitive bow and arrow spear type thingy thing. You know what I mean? So to get this curvilicious, oh, my light went off. Okay, to get this curvilicious would have been like, okay, whoa, there's a lot of food. So just think of it through that lens. Um, so her hair is very stylized. We don't really see her face. Her hair is stylized. Stylized means that it's like simplified and kind of like cartoonized, just sort of made just like, this is hair, you know? They didn't try to look, make it look super, super, realistic they just were kind of implying that yeah this is her hair she's got her little hands tiny little hands um cute little belly button and her legs aren't very big but what is big is her belly and her breasts okay so that would have been very helpful for making a baby so let's move on hall of bulls so this is a part of you know lascaux cave is a big cave and Hall of Bulls is just this like little one section of painting that we've sort of zoomed in on because um, to show you a work of art of the whole cave would take like a lot of pictures. So look, here's a section and here's a section, and here's a section. This is one section that's gotten pretty famous because it's a really interesting looking section. Hall of Bulls. So we see lots of bulls, obviously. Um, this kind of looks like a horse. Um, some of these over here look like little antelopes or gazelles or something like that. They look like they're running. Now, this is a cave painting, and we got to think about this again. They couldn't just run up to Michael's or Walmart or make an Amazon order to grab some paint and a paintbrush, okay? They had to use what was available to them naturally. So that would have been like maybe mud, maybe clay, maybe blood. Um, 
maybe like ochre or like little minerals or rocks that they could crush and you know draw with or add water to and draw with. So very, very primitive tools. Um, and they painted these animals. Why animals? Well, animals were essential to their survival. Um, they had to learn how to hunt these things if they wanted to eat. So why did they paint them on the walls? We don't really know. Remember, prehistoric art is before written art. So they didn't sit down and write an artist statement. Well, I chose to write, um, to draw Hall of Bulls because I'm feeling that, blah, blah. no, we don't have that, okay? So we have to guess. We have to like take what we know from our historians and anthropologists and um, paleontologists and figure out what maybe had happened. And we have a lot of different theories, but we don't really know. Um, one theory is that they use them for target practice, okay? So they like drew it on the wall and then they went back there and they like were like, you know, practicing throwing the spear at it, right? Or maybe teaching the younger ones like, hey, this is how you shoot a bull. Pretend that's a bull. Okay, let's, you know, um, maybe they were like trying to manifest it. Maybe they were like, okay, if we draw it on the wall, then when we go outside, they'll be plentiful and we'll be able to get them. So we don't really, maybe it was just decorative. Maybe they were really into animals, you know, like their whole life surrounded by animals. Maybe they just wanted animals on their cave wall to look at, you know? I don't know. We don't know. We have lots of guesses, but we don't really know. You can guess your own guess if you would like. Maybe you have a different theory that I don't have. Um, this was about 15,000 BCE. So again, think about this. We're in 2021, 2021. So we go back 2021 years to year zero. Then we gotta go back about 15,000 more years. Really old. Um, and so it was on the walls of caves. Uh, I had a student last class ask me, well, why were they painting on the walls of caves? Why weren't they like painting on themselves? And the answer is they very well could have been painting on themselves, okay? They very well could have been painting on leaves too, but human skin isn't gonna survive 15,000 years. Um, leaves aren't gonna survive 15,000 years unless they're miraculously fossilized. But the wall of this cave, which has been protected from the weather and from the wind and sealed off you know, away deep down in a mountain or in the ground, is gonna survive, it's gonna be protected. So that's why we have this. So there very well could have been paintings on other things that were destroyed. So what we got is what survived, right? What you got is what survived. Um, what we know is what we see. They didn't write about it, okay? So we got Venus of Willendorf, we got Hall of Bulls. This is all under the umbrella of Paleolithic art. Super, super old art, like the oldest art that we know of. Obviously there's lots more examples um, most of the examples, though, are going to be cave paintings on walls or something really small that they could carry around just because of their lifestyle and also what would survive. So this is all I got for you today. Next class, we're going to move into ancient art. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Art History with Mrs. Pearson, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.